Good morning, baby. Good morning. You ready to go? You ready for the morning? Yeah. You ready too? Let's go downstairs. Come on. All right. Who's hungry? Get up. Good girl. Let's get you guys fed. All right. Good boy. You're already sitting. Speak. 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 You gotta speak. <laughs> Ragnar. Speak. Come eat. And the little one eats in her kitchen. Hey everybody and welcome to my channel, Mazera Adventures. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about what it's like living with Malamutes on a day-to-day -day basis. This is my boy Ragnar, he's an Alaskan Malamute, and this is our other Alaskan Malamute, Freya. She's a four-month-old puppy. So uh, we've already fed them, we've already given them uh, time to go out to go potty. So we're going to give them another hour to uh, let their uh, stomach settle, and then we're going to give them some playtime, give them some uh, activities to do, and you guys will get to follow along the whole thing. So if you guys like this video, um, Give us a like, give us a subscribe, um, and uh, hit that notification bell to keep up to date on our future videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. Alrighty, we gave them a chance to digest their food. Now they're gonna be playing a little bit. I'm gonna go get some gear ready for the walk. Now we're gonna get, I got my little strange apparatus on that I'll explain here in a bit. And then we're gonna get these two guys harnessed up and then we're gonna get ourselves on the walk. So you guys ready? You guys ready? Freya, stop biting his cheek. You're crazy, you're crazy. Right, I've got Freya harnessed up. I've got Ragnar's harness here, which he is always excited to get donned. And we are about ready to go. Come on, guys. Let's go to the door. Come on. To the door. To the door. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Alrighty. You guys excited? Right, let me get you harnessed up, Ragnar. Ooh, so here we are on our walk with Ragnar. He is going to be the primary puller, so he's got the actual X-Pac harness on. Whereas Freya has got Ragnar. No, 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 no. Where are you do? Where are you going? Hike on. Let's go straight on. He is not doing much pulling today. I don't think he likes the the hot sun. He's a little bit uh, a little bit lethargic today. But he is uh, the primary puller. He's got the X-Pac harness on. Freya is a little bit too small for me to size the harness on her yet. But she's wearing a harness that uh, shouldn't hurt her or anything like that. And she keeps the line pretty loose anyway. She doesn't do a whole lot of pulling. So. That's good, but anyway, they get worn out usually from this enough um, this time of year. When it's colder, you have to do a lot more to get them to be exercised and happy. But this is a good uh, tied it over uh, um, experience for them to um, be happy until our next, usually larger adventure, usually that involves like hikes and stuff. So I'll, I'll definitely uh, share a video where we, we are doing a bit different hikes. Where are you going right now? Come on, hike. I don't think he likes these black bags up here. <laughs> what? What's wrong? He's he's wary of these black bags. <laughs> right, hike on, big boy. Hike on. Yep, so that's pretty much what we do for walking and exercise. Um, we try to do this on a daily basis if we can. And uh, so yeah, we'll see you guys back at the house. I was also gonna show you guys sort of what I have going on here. This is uh, Freya's setup. She's a little bit shorter than Ragnar so that he can uh, sort of have his own walking space. She can have her own walking space. Um, this is a little bit different than what I do when I actually hook them up to the sled. Um, Freya's a little bit too young for that yet, so, but I will be hooking them up side by side, hopefully. Um, yes, yeah, so this is Ragnar's setup and this is Freya's. Um, come on, come on Freya. She's still learning to stay, stay, keep the line taut. You see the squirrel. Ragnar, ha, straight on. <laughs> there we go, good boy. So yeah, that's basically the setup that I've got going on here. And uh, that's what we do on our walks. Now we have some two very thirsty pups, and one is a notorious slobberer. Oh boy. So <laughs> we're gonna let them get some drinks, and then I'm going to brush this big guy. <laughs> She's She also doesn't like to drink out of her own bowl. She'll just switch to Ragnar's bowl, and Ragnar has to switch back and forth. <laughs> These two goofballs. Just drink the one you've got. <laughs> okay, so he is 
still panting a little bit. I mean, he's not right now because I've got treats in my hand, but he uh, was panting earlier and I think he's still a little bit hot. Um, so I usually brush him out um, on the deck, but it's quite sunny and quite windy, sort of making, it's gonna make him hot and it's gonna blow all his hair everywhere. So we are going to uh, brush him inside. Anybody who owns a Malamute knows that they have what are called blowouts, which are basically just two times a year, they just shed their under their undercoat um, and it just comes off in big clumps. So you have to brush them about uh, once a day, you, sometimes twice a day in order to keep up with the mess that they leave behind. And uh, so it just really helps keep them, uh, keep uh, your home happy, happy and their coats happy Help if you help them uh, sort of shed. And what I use is this little pick comb. Um, I used to use a deferminator, but then I noticed that it started to actually cut some of the guard hairs, which is the actual like outer layer of his fur up here. And uh, I didn't like that, so I started to go with the pick comb, and I just st sort of gently, gently get at what is willing to come up, um, so that I'm not pulling out uh, stuff prematurely and really hurting his skin and his coat. So yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually get him brushed um, off camera, and hopefully um, I'll show you guys the aftermath if if any of it's left, and um, and I'll see you guys in a bit. Alrighty, after about ten minutes, we've got just a ridiculous amount of of. Uh, <laughs> undercoat that came out but i mean this is how much i got yesterday too so it, literally this is about daily that you'll get about this amount of fur he just produces ridiculous amounts of fur it does come off i can usually get done with his whole coat in probably about two weeks um two three weeks he'll be done actually blowing out um because it usually starts off in his hind quarters and then moves up his back so right now his butt his tail his uh, his thighs. That's all that's shedding right now. So you can actually see most of the uh, of the undercoat right here is still hanging on to the. Um, I know, I know. He's upset at me because uh, because I brushed him. He doesn't like being brushed at all. He thinks it's just the worst thing in the world. The worst thing in the world to be brushed. <laughs> So, yeah, so that's what it looks like for, to get brushed, and uh, I'm going to get this uh, cleaned up and vacuumed, and then we'll be right back with the five things that you should know about Malamutes. Alrighty, everybody, now that we've got them fed, we've got them exercised, they're relaxing, uh, he's been brushed, she was too young to be brushed for now, she's not having a blowout, so she's fine, but he is brushed, everybody is good to go for the day, um, and we're going to talk about the five things that you guys should know about Malamutes. So the very first thing that I would like to talk about is they're really talkative. As you could probably tell from the beginning of the video, uh, they love to speak, they love to yelp and howl, especially Freya, uh, she's, she has been very, very talkative. And uh, that's just the way that they really like to talk and express what they want. Usually when they want something or they're trying to communicate something to you, it's not gonna be, um, it's, it, I mean, it's probably gonna be a combination of a couple things, but for the most part, they're gonna choose to communicate verbally to you. And that's just how they like to talk. So if you're going to get a Malamute, that's one thing you're really going to have to get used to. They're going to howl when you leave. They're going to bark and yell at other dogs probably. And uh, that's just the way that they are. And that's probably something you're going to have to either live with if you get a Malamute. Or, I mean, it's something that I really enjoy. So I, I really enjoy getting to uh, teach them to talk and teach them to to use their voice uh, to ask for things. Usually they get to be let out or to ask for food. Um, so it's, I think it's actually a tool that you can use and it's something that I really uh, enjoy about them. The second thing you should know about Malamutes is that they are always hungry. Now, the reason for this is because they grew up in places like the Arctic where they didn't know where the next meal was coming from. So they treat every meal like it's their last meal. And so um, if you try to do things like free feed them, which is essentially allow them to have food uh, always, just have food available to them, they're going to eat whatever you give them. So uh, a Malamute is typically one that's at risk of obesity, which usually leads to heart issues. So it's something that you really have to be careful with when you have a Malamute. The third thing that you should know about Malamutes is that they are working dogs and they need exercise to be happy. These dogs were bred to be sled dogs. So they have a very huge drive to work and to get exercise. And a lot of times, if you don't give them this exercise, if you don't allow them to exert themselves, they're gonna become destructive. They do things like bite through uh, walls, they, they chew through uh, baseboards, they chew through your furniture. Um, and so a lot of times, if you really wanna have uh, your house not be destroyed and you own a Malamute, you're gonna have to exercise them, you're going to have to find things for them to do. I like to go hiking. I have had him pull a sled before and uh, I'm going to have Freya pull a sled as well. But as you could, as you saw earlier, I like to have him hooked up to me to pull me and it's a really great way of exercising him and keeping him happy. 
Number four is that they shed, and boy, do they shed. As you guys saw earlier, they have what are called blowouts, usually twice a year, um, where their undercoat just falls out and just leaves a big old mess in your house. And they do shed um, the rest of the year as well, but usually not near as heavy as they do during blowout season. And um, that's something you really have to live with when you live with an Arctic dog, um, is that they have these winter coats that they're going to have to shed during the summer. And uh, you're going to really have to keep up with it to keep them happy and healthy. But uh, another thing that's really important to know about their coat is that you re you might be tempted to, but you really should never shave their coats because shaving their coats uh, usually makes them hotter. It usually makes them viable to sunburns, really, really bad sunburns because they're, they're for a real, or their skin is really never meant to see sun like ours is. And so uh, you, 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 uh, you give them that exposure to the sun and they're going to get really horrible sunburns. And their fur actually acts as somewhat of an insulator for, to keep them cool as well. Um, they, it keeps the cool in as much as it keeps the heat out and the heat in as much as keeps the cold out as well during the winter months. So it's really, it's really most going to help your dog if you let them keep your coat and you just brush them and you help their, uh, their shedding process along. Number five, they're very pack oriented dogs. Now, what does this mean? This usually means that they form a very close bond with those that they consider to be in their pack. So for us, that'd be my wife and I and Freya and Ragnar, they're sort of our pack. And Ragnar and Freya seem to have a really close bond with uh, with each other and with us. And one of the ways they express that, I'll give you guys an example. Freya was at the dog park, Ragnar was in the big dog area. And uh, he didn't really want to leave the fence. He wanted to continue to watch over Freya and be close to her because that's a lot of times the mentality that these Malmutes have. They really just want to be close to each other. They don't want to leave each other's side and they want to make sure that they are safe with each other. And I think it's one of the most beautiful things about Malmutes is that they just have this amazing loyalty, this amazing drive to... Um, to sort of form these bonds and it really shows how instinctive they are and uh, I think it's just an amazing thing. So those are my five things you guys should know about Malamutes. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give us a like, uh, hit the subscription button, uh, hit that notification bell and uh, we'll see you guys next time.